Hey guys, today we are going to discuss about Bill's palsy from Roganidana. Let's have a look at the case. You wake up one morning and your face feels stiff and odd. When you look in a mirror, half your face appears to droop. You can only manage half a smile. Your eyes is dripping tears and doesn't want to close. What's in the world is going on? It's nothing but Bell's palsy condition. Definition Palsis of the facial nerve causing muscular weakness in one side of the face is Bell's palsy. Who is Bell? Charles Bell, known for his studies on the nervous system and the brain, in the 19th century discovered that lesions of the seventh cranial nerve causes facial paralysis. Facial nerve. The facial nerve is the seventh cranial nerve. It emerges from the brain stem between pons and medulla. It controls the muscles of facial expression and functions in the conveyance of taste sensations from the anterior two thirds of the tongue and oral cavity. The five facial nerves are trigeminal branch, zygomatic branch, buccal branch, mandibular branch, and cervical branch in parotid gland. Muzzle action. Frontalis action is wrinkling, corrugated supercilia frowning vertical wrinkles of forehead, orbicularis oculi for closure of eyes, orbicularis oris for whistling, buccinator is for puffing the mouth, dilator of the mouth showing the teeth, platysma is forcibly pulling the angle of the mouth downwards and backwards. Here you can see all the facial muscles. Let me explain. Temporalis temporalis muscle. It helps in moving mandible up, down and side by side. Corrugator muscle. It helps in the frowning vertical wrinkles of forehead. Masseter. Masseter helps to elevate the mandible and raising the lower jaw. The lower jaw. Mentalis. Located at the tip of the chin, tip of the chin and acts as a primary muscle of lower lip and it provides stability to the lower lip to allow it to pout. Platysma. Forcibly pull the angle of the mouth downwards and backwards. Here are zygomatic muscles. They are also known as laughing muscles because they help in laughing. Buccinator. It helps in puffing the mouth. Exam examination is nothing but the difference between the upper and the lower motor neuron lesions. Upper motor neuron, upper motor lesions. The frontalis is spared, allowing normal furrowing of brow and eye wrinkling. In lower motor lesions, all muscles of facial expression are affected. Types of motor neurons. There are two types of motor neurons: lower motor neuron and upper motor neuron. Upper motor neuron. Upper motor neurons originate in the motor region of cerebral cortex or in the brain stem and carry motor information down to the lower motor neurons. The main effector or motor neurons for voluntary movement lie in the primary motor cortex and are a type of joint pyramidal cell called Bett cell. Lower motor neuron. Lower motor neurons are motor neurons located in either the anterior gray column and anterior nerve roots or the cranial nerve nuclei of brainstem and cranial nerve lower motor neurons. The motor cranial nuclei and their axons that is the motor fibers of 3 to 12 cranial nerves. What is a lesion? A lesion is any abnormal change or damage in the tissue of an organism usually caused by the disease or trauma. Lesion is derived from the Latin word lesio, meaning injury. Definition of lower motor neuron lesions. Destruction of the motors which supply the muscles. It starts from the anterior horn cells and at the muscles. Features Features and manifestation of lower motor neuron lesions. Motor affection. Flaccid paralysis, that is the defection in the muscles. Muscle vasting, that is atrophy in the muscles due to the lossing of muscle function. Atonia, that is complete loss of muscle tone as the nerve fibers is affected. Facial nerve, it affects one side of the face. 
Here we are going to study about right side facial palsy. In right side facial palsy, the left side face is drooping. Nuclear lesions. There are two types of nuclear lesions, supranuclear lesion and infranuclear lesion. Usually part of hemiplegia, only the lower part of face is paralysis. The upper part escapes due to the bilateral representation in the cerebral cortex, which means the only half of the face is drooping. While well, in infranuclear lesions, entire face is paralyzed as seen in Bell's palsy. Because in infranuclear lesion, the facial nerve is damaged. Causes there are five causes for the Bell's palsy. This is trauma, infection, metabolic and neoplastic and idiopathic, idiopathic causes. In trauma, basal cell skull fractures, facial injuries, penetrating injury to middle ear, altitude paralysis, scuba diving and lightning are included. In infections such as external otitis, otitis media and mastootitis. In metabolic it includes diabetic mellitus and hypertension. In neoplastic, they include seven nerve tumor and benign lesions of parotid. In idiopathic, familial Bell's palsy, autoimmune syndrome, and multiple sclerosis are included. Examination of the facial nerve. Ask a patient to show their teeth. Open his mouth to compare nasolabial folds, telling him to close his eyes. Telling him to frown, wrinkle his forehead, raise eyebrows, bare his teeth and open his mouth, blowing out cheeks, perceiving the lips, strength and weakness. By doing all this, we can examine a facial nerve. Here are some conditions which lead to the facial paralysis. They include infectious or idiopathic conditions, systemic conditions, tumors, endocrine functions, toxins or trauma, neuro neurologic and congenital. Bell's palsy conditions. Incidence is 23 people among 1 lakh people. Affects men and women equally. All aged are all time of the year. Increased occurrence in the uh, uh, elderly diabetics, hypertensives than in the common people. Increased incidence in the women during the third semester of pregnancy, two weeks preceding delivery, first two weeks postpartum. In six, 1 in 60 lifetime occurrence of single episode. Onset of Bell's palsy is acute. Half of the cases attain maximum paralysis in 48 hours, that is 2 days. All cases are clinically prominent by 5 days. Clinical conditions of a patient. Corner of the mouth droops, crease and skin folds faces. Forehead is unfurrowed. Eyelids will not close. Eye on the palsy side rolls upwards, which is the main thing in Bell's phenomena. Lower lid sags and falls away from the conjunctiva. Tears spill over cheek. Foot collects between the teeth and lips. Saliva may dribble from the corner of the mouth. Heaviness or numbness of the face. Sensory loss rarely demonstrable. Onset of Bell's palsy is acute. Half of the cases attain maximum paralysis in 48 hours, that is 2 days. All cases are clinically prominent by 5 days. Clinical conditions of a patient. Corner of the mouth droops, crease and here you can see the movement of the eye upwards or inwards while trying to close the eye. So here is the uh, conditions in the face, which are divided into forehead, eye and mouth. When it is normal, the functions will be normal. When there is mild dysfunction in the forehead due to the Bell's palsy, slight weakness to the good function will be there. If moderate dysfunction occurs, noticeable slight to moderate movement will be there. Moderately severe dysfunction causes obvious weakness or disfiguring asymmetry. Severe dysfunction is there, then barely predictable motion will be there. If total paralysis occur in the forehead, then there will be no movement.
eyes. No, in normal condition, there will be normal function. In mild dysfunction, complete closure with minimal effort. Moderate dysfunction, complete obvious weakness, eye closure with effort. Moderately severe dysfunction causes incomplete eye closure. Severe dysfunction causes barely predictable eyelid movement. In total paralysis of the eye, no movement will be there. Uh, now going to talk about mouth. In normal condition, there will be normal function. If there is mild dysfunction, slight asymmetry or weakness of the mouth movement. If there is moderate dysfunction, obvious but no disfiguring weakness. Moderately severe dysfunction causes asymmetry at rest. Severe dysfunction causes barely predictable mouth movement. If there is total paralysis, then there will be no movement. House Brackman's classification of facial function. The House Brackman facial nerve grading system is widely used to characterize the degree of facial paralysis. In the scale, grade is assigned to normal function. And grade 6 represents complete paralysis. Intermediate grades vary according to the function at rest and with effort. In this classification, a scale is measured with 6 grades. That is from 1 to 6. If it is 6, then it will be severe. Diagnose. Diagnosed. The diagnosis of the disease is very important because... For every disease, your diagnosis is the only reason, the only thing we can do to know the disease. Uh, in Bell's palsy, there are no specific lab tests to confirm diagnosis. We'll exam for upper and lower facial weakness. Electromyography, it is used to confirm presence of damage and determine severity. In MRI and CT scan, it helps to know the cause of pressure on nerve. Prognosis of Bell's palsy. 80% patients recover within few weeks or 2 to 12 weeks. 10% patients permanent disfigurement, long term sequel will be there. In 8% patients it will reoccur. Best clinical guide to progress is the severity of the palsy during the first few days after pre presentation. Recovery of this precedes motor function. Let's have a look at the case study. Case study is very important in Roganidana. A 28 years old female had fever for 12 days followed by weakness of left half of the face 2 days after subsidence of fever. Patient had numbness over the left half of the face. Mouth was noticed to be deviated to the right side. Patient has difficulty in shaving. Food. Dribbling of saliva and running of tears from the eyes. There was pain in the ear and tinnitus prior to onset. Patient has no ear discharge, not a diabetic. On examination, patient was having no wrinkles on forehead, unable to close her eyes, whistle blow or blow out, mouth deviated to right side, could not put out platysma on left side. A diagnosis of acute complete a diagnosis of acute complete lower motor neuron facial palsy was made. Here you can see the severe condition in Bell's palsy. If you have any doubts or want me to improvise, let me know in the comment sections below. Thank you.